welcome to subramani please subscribe please hit the bell icon i'm not i'm not getting enough subscribers now so anyway that apart i'm going to talk about a word a pe ratio i think it's a very often heard word uh, every anchor everybody who comes on television everybody says the market pe is high the market pe is low and then when you read some books they'll say there's nothing called market pe don't don't believe it right so let us come and see this could be a longish video or maybe it would be in two three parts also so first of all let us uh, define what is pe ratio pe ratio is uh, it, <coughs> fairly obvious it is price to earning ratio uh, where the earnings goes on the numerator and the uh, price goes on the denominator now what happens is in this equation one thing is true that is price uh one thing is earning which you have to believe it is true right it is audited or whatever but you i, I do not know how trustworthy a balance sheet is so therefore i am saying for a minute let us accept that earnings could be uh, true not true exaggerated underplayed whatever now uh, the pe is ultimately a number which the market gives a particular company over a long period of time so when a uh, when mr deepak parekh used to run hfc limited hfc limited always got a pe of 30 and that is because uh, pe is a function of how much the market respects the company how consistent the company's growth is how consistent or how as per rule uh, do they pay dividends if they earn 1 rupee do they pay 30 paise as dividends when a company have a rule that 30% of the earnings will be paid off as dividends so whether you do all that all this put together becomes the respect for the company the predictability the industry in which you are all this together determine the pe so some pe some companies which are commodity companies will never have a pe more than 7 or 8 and some companies will never have a pe less than 45 right so if somebody tells you that 20 is the right uh, pe at which to buy uh, how the hell will you ever buy a colgate or procter and gamble or hindustan unilever you will never ever be able to buy them because they are never at a pe of 20 Uh, the lowest pe of a hul could be 45 and the highest could be 85 so when do you buy and when do you sell do you buy uh, because the pe is high do you buy because the pe is low do you sell because the pe is high these are all very difficult questions to answer and uh, here is an attempt to at least tell you what is the pe and uh, and how you could possibly use it i am not even saying this is how you should use it i don't use pe as a very helpful indicator except to say that oh this share is terribly overpriced uh, its pe is too high so i use it more on the high side rather than on the low side also understand for some things like commodities the pe rule could be exactly the opposite you should buy when the pe is high and sell when the pe is low because uh, the earnings are very fluctuating so never use pe for commodities right so if you want to buy a commodity buy a commodity when the commodity prices are languishing at the bottom and it is just not moving up that's the time to be buying a commodity stock it would be available very cheap and then when everybody talks about oh steel prices are very high copper prices are very high right oil prices are high that's a great time to be seeing the performance of those companies and you will find them doing very well uh, with a very uh, but the pe could be low because the earnings may have done some catch up right so that is the time to be selling because the market may have uh, done very well uh, at 1100 or at 1250 1300 was a good price to sell tata steel uh then it has to come down it might come down and bounce up or you could be a long term investor saying oh because tata steel has come down to 90 rupees uh, i i will be a buyer at 1300 at 130 rupees i'll be a seller see the share has shifted now to a 1 rupee share so therefore the adjustment so you have to know all that right so it's not just uh, knowing the pe because pe calculation is the easiest so what does the pe do for it compares the current valuation at this price at this earning is it fairly priced or overpriced or underpriced assuming that you know how to do those things in a from a different learning it is called the pe doesn't teach you all that so basically there are three types of pe the most often used one is the current pe the last reported pe then there is the current pe and then there is the forward pe 
all are good indicators assuming that you trust the earning then therefore the earning divided by price it tells you oh this company is at a pe of 24 now but on, uh, on it was for the for year ended march 2022 which got reported for march 2023 which is the current pe uh, the pe which is the current uh, period for that the earnings has gone up so the pe is no longer 22 it is going to be something like 20 and next year there is going to the company is going to do very well and therefore the pe for next year earning is 14 not 15 So based on this, you have three PEs for the same company, but the most often used one is the one which got reported. So even today, people would be using the March 22 earnings for the PE which is quoted in most places, right? So that is uh, that is one uh, one thing you have to, you have to understand that there are three types of PE: forward PE, or current PE, and all that. So you need to understand that. Uh, you also need to understand that. Uh, So, what are the limitations of PE? First of all, the PE the PE assumes that the earnings are honestly stated, and the auditor has done a good job. Uh, this is not always the case. Only when you sit down and do an investigation, you realize how much has been missed out. Something sometimes deliberately, and sometimes inadvertently. Right. So, the earnings could be depressed deliberately. Earnings could be increased. Uh, it could be increased. Anything could be done. So, if a new MD has come during the year. is very likely to depress and say oh this uh, it has done so badly etc etc because he wants a bigger uh, visibility saying oh i increase the pe from a low of 6 to a high of 22 right he wants to say that so he will try to depress the pe that is also possible or when he is uh, the year when he is leaving he might want to just jump up the uh, jump up the eps so eps itself is not very uh, great uh, indicator of what is happening but uh, given the fact that you are sitting a few thousand kilometers away from the client or the company you have to go by what is uh, audited eps right so first of all that uh, the uh, if the earnings are uh, the earnings are wrong pe ratio is wrong the also remember that the accounting systems keep going through a lot of change for example gap Uh, which is international accounting practice uh, uses accrual income so some income may have actually not accrued uh, or may have actually happened but it may not have accrued so you know the visibility of that earning is there but you cannot show it because uh, you are saying oh you are on a accrual basis but uh, that we will take only in the next year because it's only for the next year that it is accrued but the fact that you can see the visibility and you are an insider you know that even at a lower pe the share is worth buying because that money is going to come in the future so some part of the future is not being captured in the price or in the reported price or in the quarterly result because of which the pe could be wrong uh so whether your earnings are overstated understated due to accounting practices or by just the management or auditor quality that is again something for you to think and worry about uh, you will have lot of companies improving their cash uh, ratios uh, ca- cash eps but the overall EP, ep eps may not change so you may then be worried as to what to believe and what not to believe so that is another uh, what is important is the cash eps though the accrual eps and the, the dep- uh, in the year in which you have grown a lot you have bought a lot of assets very uh, likely that your uh, depreciation has ensured that the eps is lower but you know in your heart that you are tracking the company you know that the cash eps may be very high and the gap between cash eps and the reported eps could be very high also simply because this year new assets have been depreciated much more if the depreciation has been not provided for again you will not know unless you are an inside info insider and you are willing to go or you are willing to go through the notes on accounts to see uh, what should have been the depreciation claimed and what have they actually claimed right you will know the difference if you don't know those differences then how will you use a, a pe ratio uh what happens when a company uh so my take on pe is understand the pe limitations of pe understand that the 
uh, that some companies will always get a high PE in some industries like FMCG gets a high PE, uh, MNCs get a higher high PE, some, uh, some companies have good reputation and they get a good PE but uh, some companies with fantastic reputation have not delivered anything in the past few years then their PE goes down. The company like say GE, GE did not look expensive at any stage, it was at a PE of 14 but then its uh, earnings declined due to disruption and things like that. So, GE which, uh, which survived in the S&P for 100 years or maybe more uh, is suddenly not able to have that kind of market cap because people are not buying it. People do not know whether what it will go doing, uh, what it will do going forward, right. So, all these things put together make using PE very difficult. So, you may have to use a price to book ratio and things like that. I mean other than the PE there are other indicators. You may have to use some of those together with PE before you come to a conclusion. So, do not just say oh PE is high so it is a buy, PE is low so it is a uh, sorry PE is low so it is a buy, PE is high so it is a sell. Those kind of logic does not work. It differs from industry to industry. Uh, it depends from you, uh, from your own perception saying oh I do not want to pay 35 for uh, 35 PE for a Colgate, I will buy it for the price to come down or I will buy something else. So, you understand what is happening, you understand if a company is stagnating and then again the EPS may not be growing, so, but the PE will keep, uh, PE will be high. Uh, because it has got a great past, but if the future is not good, the market brings down the PE. Right. So, understand all that, see how the PE is out to play, understand and then use it. Thank you.